The other thing that would cause it to be up there is if you have a long reach on your entry, because somebody said you need a long stroke, and you interpreted that to mean reach way out here in the air. All right? Those two things are going to end up with your hand entering and going to that point. And you can see what happens to your legs. All right? Your legs may not sink. You'll probably kick hard because you feel that happening and you're, and you're trying to correct it. All right? So then you find the proper x, y coordinates, practice that, imprint it, reinforce it in a lot of ways, and then every switch, every stroke you take for the rest of your life, you go to that coordinate. Use your hand to extend your body line. So this is a drill we used to call the under switch. Now we call it the spear switch. And, and the whole reason for it is I really want to focus on extending my body line fully to a particular spot, to that spot I've chosen in the skating drill, all right, every time my hand goes forward. I want to change my thinking, I want to change how my body responds to being in the water to lengthening into a streamlined position, lengthening into a streamlined position. And it's easier for me to imprint that when the movement of the hand is linear rather than arcing this way. So we change that imprint by having, having the thing, having the activity happen underwater, but right now I'm thinking about that target I set, because everything about that target is consequential to how I will swim. But you can see that my body line that you saw in the whole stroke is, is essentially I'm imprinting that every time I move a hand forward, I go to the body line that I want to have in the whole stroke. All right, and then the next step is learning to propelled by driving the high hip, so I'm going to think about where, what's the target for my left hand. You can see how re relaxed the left hand is. All right, I'm coming forward on a track that will not lead to crossing over, but take me straight forward. All right, and when I get to this point, I want to make sure that my arm is at an angle that all the power that's going to be produced by my hip drive, all of that power is going to translate into driving my hand strongly to its target because the, the more strongly I can drive my hand to the target, the farther ahead that target will be when I hit it. All right? And that will be a longer stroke. But I'm doing it with free power. Hip drive, gravity, taking advantage. Now this is too, too cramped. It's just an illustration and then where it should be. Wider, not too close to the body. All right? And then as I'm practicing, it looks very much like swimming, the one difference being that my hand is still in the water on the recovery, but you can see that it's relaxed. I'm yielding to the water's resistance, not fighting it, not trying to overcome it, but using that resistance to encourage me to keep my arm relaxed, encourage me to keep moving on a straight line forward with no circular movements. And then finally, I'll make a transition from having my hand in the water which is what I'm doing now, feeling the resistance, yielding to the resistance, consciously relaxing the hand and forearm, consciously making sure that my drive is from a steep angle of attack to pick up all the power from the hip drive, and then finally I'm going to take the fingers barely out of the water, and you can see I relax the hand is on recovery, I don't want to have the muscles in that recovering hand and arm activated. There's no gain in it. And if they're activated, it'll tend to bring a little too much energy, which could send me, send me off course. So I want that hand and forearm consciously relaxed, going into the water cleanly without, without creating bubbles or turbulence. You know, all I'm thinking about all the time is anything that could happen that could suck up energy and, and avoiding, avoiding that. And this is just a little segment showing how you make that stuff happen automatically, habitually, and so on. It's, it's been a product, I can't tell you how many hours of little segments of activities like this. And it's not what you see people doing when you go to the pool, right? Going back and forth, three cycles of something, all right, over and over and over, because it doesn't happen naturally. It has to be learned, it has to be imprinted. Uh, and then if I want it to happen on the 10,000th stroke, the 15,000th stroke, the 20,000th stroke, and so on, I've got to take the time to make it a habit. Five minutes, okay. I had a little more video of open water swimming, um, but we're not going to have time to show that. 
Uh, I'll leave a little time for questions. I'll, we'll have this down at our booth if you want to see the open water part of this. Uh, I could show it at the booth. So anyway, um, got five minutes for questions. I'll just leave it play for anybody who'd rather watch that. Questions? Yes? Uh, breathing in open water. I, I distribute my breaths equal number on the right and left. Generally, that's what I try to do. Same number of breaths on the right and left. There are some times when I'll take 20, 30, or 40 in a row on the right and a similar number on the, on the left. But all of my practice, all of my racing, I try to breathe equal number of times to both sides. Okay. Anything else? Pardon? I, I, all right. Let's just do this the next size. Everybody hold up your hand. Pull, hold your fingers together. All right. Do you want to do that for an hour? I let him go. That's all you have to do. All right? That will hold water. There's no point in activating those muscles and making your hand and forearm tired because there's no gain. We were just doing the exercise. Okay. Do you think it's effective to learn by the DVD or do you need a, a person giving you live feedback looking at you? Thousands of people have improved their swimming by the DVD and, and thousands have also done that and then gotten instruction from a coach and, and taken another leap forward. So obviously a knowledgeable person will help you know when you've got it almost not quite right and just right. It makes a big difference, but you can make a lot of progress on your own if you're the type of person who can learn visually and has the patience to do what you saw me do. Can you comment on the stroke rate? Um, I always try to swim at the slowest possible stroke that I can at any given speed, but I want the capacity to stroke at a higher rate. I mean, there's not one simple answer to that. I practice the stroke rates between about 1.3 seconds per stroke and 0 .8, 0 .85 seconds per stroke. That's a pretty sizable range, and I work at being able to be efficient at both ends of that range. Where do I use 0 .85? Something you wouldn't do in a triathlon, but I swim, I want to swim really fast the first hundred meters or so in an open water race so that I can be drafting off fast swimmers. Um, and because when I get behind them, I can relax and my heart rate comes back down. But in that stretch there, I'm going to be swimming at 0.85 seconds per stroke, which is a pretty high rate, and I want to be efficient, so I have to practice that. I use tempo trainer pretty much all the time in my practice. So I'm swimming to specific tempos all the time. When you're open water swimming, how many strokes do you take before you lift your head up? Ah, great question. Um, I've, I've swum as, as many as 1,200 strokes without lifting my head. I, <laughs> I counted to 1,200 that time. I've swum as many as 1,200. There's a, boy, there's a, that's a whole long topic. What I try to do is, is breathe normally, as you saw in that open water segment, and you only saw me lift my head once, I think, during that segment. Breathe normally, and as I do, I see other people like this, and I smile because they're wasting energy and keeping us on course. Um, and when I do, when I do lift, I just scoot my goggles. That's in the, in the open water video that, as well. <laughs>